Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? Hi everyone, great to have you here today. My name is Jessica and I'm really excited to be here with you today to explore watercolor play and discover surprises along the way in part of this month's theme, Surprise. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the materials we need for today are watercolor paint and they come in tubes like these or sometimes they come in pans and pans just have the same paint that has been dry so you just need water to wet them again to use the paint again uh, you can also squeeze the tubes into pans yourself into something like this that has my chosen colors and, and I just use it again by putting water into the paint to get them to release the pigment, which is the color. And of course we'll need brushes. So the brushes I'll be using today are specifically made for watercolors. They tend to be softer than the ones that are made for other types of paint but you're more than welcome to use any other brush that you, you might have at home or on hand. I think it'll be really interesting and cool to look at different brushes and how they react with watercolor. So that's really up to you. Other things we need, we need paper to paint on. So I have watercolor paper that I am using today for this and it tends to be thicker and it can handle a lot of water being on the paper as we paint. But if you don't have this at home, you can always just use any other paper you have that you like, as long as it's not too absorbent, like construction paper or tissue paper. Um, but even so, even if that's all you have, I think it'll be really neat to see what kind of you know, surprises we might discover using watercolor on those surfaces. So it's really up to you. And of course, to use watercolor paint, we need water. I just filled up water in this jar that we have here at Art Starts. You can use really any, any kind of container to hold your water as you paint. Okay, now that we have the three main materials, we're gonna get started with the warm up exercise. Like me, you probably use watercolor to fill parts of your painting after you're drawing. So for example, let's say I'm drawing a tree. And then I would use watercolor to fill in what I've drawn. Got a nice green in here.
And maybe for variety, I'll start to add in a little bit of blue. But do you think there's a way for us to use different materials around our homes to explore how we, they react with watercolor paint? Maybe when we look at how they react, we can start to use that in our art. Let's take a moment to go around our house and see what we like that we want to bring to play with watercolor. Feel free to pause the video at the stage and come back whenever you like. Okay, so the first thing I think I'm going to use is salt. So take my watercolor paper and because when paper gets water on it, it tends to get curvy, a little out of shape. I'm going to tape this down. Okay, so feel free to choose any color you like. I'm going to choose blue. I've already squeezed some paint out here already, but you can see. And I don't have a project in mind. I don't have any drawing in mind. I'm not doing anything beforehand. I just really want to see how the salt works with watercolor. So here we go. Feel free to follow along or pause as you also put paint down on your paper and we'll get to the next step together. Okay, so with that, I'm gonna use the salt now. going to grate some on my hand so I can sprinkle it on top of my painting. And then we'll give it a minute for this to dry. So we're leaving this to dry and I think I'm going to take this off the tape off. You can start to see something happening to the paint where I've sprinkled salt. But I think we have to wait for it to fully dry before we really see what happens to it. Okay, once it's fully dry, I'm gonna try to get the salt off and we can really look at what it looks like then. Put this away for now. Now I want to see what sugar would do. Do you think it'll be same as salt or do you think it'll be a bit different? I guess we'll find out. Again I'm going to tape my paper down and doing this really helps the paper to stay put. Alright for the sugar I think I'm gonna stick with the purple and maybe add a different color, not the blue. We'll use a combination of purple and pink. And what does this taste like? So sugar is sugar, uh, sorry, salt is salty, sugar is sweet. All right. I'm going to start with pink first, and this time I'm going to start at the bottom of my paper. And then I'll start to introduce some purple at top, at the top, and just kind of blend those two in together. Or use three colors. That's also up to you. This is just your fun. All right. So before it dries, I want to use sugar and see what happens. Okay. So maybe for this, I'll just use a brush. And maybe I'll dump a little lot in this one corner, just so that we can see the difference. All right, and we'll leave that to dry. Okay, so while that's drying, I'm going to clean up my workspace. And I think I'm going to move the, I'm going to move this guy here as well, so that we can compare this and the one that we use salt on. 
which is fully dry at this point. All right, so here is the one that we used salt on. Look at that. Look at the way salt has changed our painting. What do you think? What are some ways do you think we can use this in our work? Let's see how the sugar did. Wow, it's beautiful. Because the sugar crystals are smaller, I think we can see that it's not as large the, the way that the paint had been grabbed by the crystals, but it's still there. You can still see this beautiful effect. Okay, so next we're gonna use wax crayons. And I just picked any color and you can pick any colors you, you like as well. I did pick the white because I wanted to see if it does anything differently to different to the other colors or how that would look. So let's get our paper set up and we'll give that a try. Okay, so different to the salt and sugar exercise, I think I'm going to try to draw something first and then paint around it. Or maybe I'll do both. So I'm going to split the paper in half. And in the first part, I'm going to use the wax crayons first. And in the second part, I'm gonna use the watercolors first. So let me just, oh, that's my white, the green, Bring. I like to do flowers with the yellow. I think yellow flowers are really pretty. So here's some flowers and the blue. I'll just draw one. Okay. So next, I'm going to take my watercolor brush and think about colors I want to just experiment with this, you know, just to play with it. Uh, maybe at the top I'll start with a blue. This time I'm using my pen watercolors here. I just have to add water and get it to release the paint. Ooh. So the white, you couldn't really see against the white paper, but with watercolors, it's starting to show a lot. And you can see that the paint doesn't go where I have put the wax crayons. So it's, it's really interesting. So we'll let that dry. I'm just adding some clean water to the edge of my last, where my last paint brush stroke was. And I'm gonna see what else I can just bring this down. Okay, so for this spring part, maybe I'll use a little bit of the paint that I used before. And again, we're seeing the same thing where the wax crayon was, the watercolor leaves alone. So that's really neat. Maybe for the yellow flowers, I'm going to use some orange. Yep, we're seeing it again. You can see the water kind of being moved where I try to paint, when I try to paint over the wax crayons. Okay. So I think I can even try to paint inside. That's really neat. Okay, 
And here's the last flower, so And then maybe for the green or the blue crayons here, I'll use the blue to see what it looks like against the blue. Okay, so you can see that the darker blue is bringing the wax crayons lighter blue into, yeah, it brings more it makes it look lighter against a dark a darker blue. Okay. And on this side, like I said, we'll start with the watercolors first. So maybe we'll match what we have here. So I'll start with the light blue. I'm gonna paint an area with light blue. You can see the colors mixing, but that's okay. It actually, you know, surprise, it looks it looks really nice. I, I, I really like this effect that it has. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And some orange. And some dark blue. Okay, and we'll leave that to dry so we can draw with wax crayons on top of it. Okay, now that this area has been dried, we can kind of touch it and see if it has or not. I'm going to be using the same wax crayons, this time over the watercolor paint to see what happens. So the white doesn't show anything. the green. I mean, you can see a little bit, but it's, it's not doing this, which I really loved. Okay. And same goes for the yellow. And the blue. So it's, it's really different when you use the wax crayons to start and then adding watercolor on top versus having the watercolor first and then trying to draw or make marks on top of it using it using these crayons right i could see this for writing messages secret messages or blocking areas out where you don't want to paint or even creating effects like this where you are using color, but not really filling in the lines that you have drawn. This, I think, if I want to have something that looks soft in the background or very subtle textures, I could see myself using it. The white on top of paint didn't really do anything. But maybe if I just use paint on top of it, it'll be different. We'll see. I mean, this is, we can be surprised. Yeah, so that's really cool. What had happened is that the light, lighter blue that we have painted the paper with initially to start with, um, has dried and I put white Crayola on top of it. And now I'm using a darker blue to go over it. And it's not showing white. It's actually showing the light blue that we used earlier. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty neat. Maybe we can try for the other parts too. So it looks like there's a lot of different ways that we can use the crayons and watercolor. Now that they're both dry, we can see the difference between the side that we started with 
the wax crayons first and then colored in the other side where we used the watercolor first put the wax crayons on and then went back to it with watercolor so you can see how different they can be now we're moving on to the next exercise where we're going to start to use some plastic wrap. I think for this one, I think I'm going to start with color green. Try something different. And then we'll use the plastic wrap on top. So see what kind of what we come up with. Actually, I really like the combination of colors here. So maybe I'll use the green. It's all about play, so. Okay. Let's put green at the bottom. We need lots of water. And as I bring my brush up, I'm adding more just water to blend up, which is a, like a way for paint to be darker here and be lighter as we use more and more water to get the paint to dilute. Dilute is a word to um, think about when we use watercolor paint and it's to, it's when, it's when you add water to the paint more and more and that that process is called dilution okay so i'll use some of the blue you do want to make sure that it's quite wet because that's how we can use the the cling wrap to move the water around in on the paper. Okay, so just kind of laid it flat. Maybe I want to try different things down here in the green. So I'll move it closer or I'll make it more color. Keep having more plastic wrap down here versus up here at the top. I'm starting to realize that because of the fact that this is plastic and it's on top of wet watercolor paper it won't really dry so that was it's a surprise um i think i'm gonna have to remove the plastic wrap and then carefully and then let it dry as it sits okay Ooh. okay welcome back i i've just finished using a different paper to tape it down to this to my surface here and I think I'm gonna look at playing with watercolor paint and some water. Uh, I had mentioned using a spray bottle with water. I don't know what happened with the spray bottle so I think I'm just gonna use my hands to spray. Okay so I'm gonna start by using some purple paint. There's already some purple here that I'm just gonna use because of the fact that we're nearing the end of this episode and I, I wanna make sure I'm using up all the paints that I'm gonna squeeze onto the palette. So let's use purple. Purple is a beautiful color too, so it kind of works. So for this part, I'm gonna just put some purple paint down. And I hope you're starting to think about, you know, what if we start to combine these different things that we were playing with earlier today? And so instead of a spray bottle, I'm going to just play with my clean water here and spray. Like that. You can immediately see how the, the clean water, when it's being sprayed onto the surface, it creates this kind of cool effect. It actually reminds us, it reminds me of a lot like the salt and the sugar effect, but we'll see how it goes. And then for this side, like I said, we'll let it dry more than it did here. And then we'll see how different they are. Why not? Oh, I 
it might brush into the pink by accident, but I don't think it showed. Even if it did, I think it still looked really neat and, and fun. So again, we're not trying to make anything perfect or, or produce anything. It's to just really have fun with it. All right, so for this side, we'll let it dry. I've given it three minutes and it's kind of dry now. And you can see that this side, when initially it looked like the water splatters were going to look like the, the salt and the sugar effects, it actually changed quite a lot as it dried. I think the water started to get larger, expand, and really create these really interesting things going on here. So this side is kind of dry, it's semi-dry. I don't know how long you waited, but you can wait as long as you like or as short as you like. Um, obviously, it would be different for all of us. And I'm just going to take my hand into the clean water and spray. See if that does anything. Okay. I see that this area actually wasn't dry. So when I said it wasn't, it was semi-dry. I think some areas were dry and some weren't. And you can see the fully dry areas, it did get affect, it did get kind of affected by the water, but not as much as it did when it was when the paint was wet and we uh, splashed water on it. But this area is certainly getting the same kind of effect as, as we saw earlier on. So we'll let that dry as well and, and then I'll take this off to see what it looks like. As you can see, the uh, dry areas that got water splashed on it, it's not really doing very much, but the effect is very soft and subtle. And the other areas where it was wet and we splashed water on it, it's gotten pretty cool, you know, thing going on. I almost feel like they remind me of jellyfish. I don't know what they remind you of. Um, I would love to hear it if, if you want to, if you want to shout it out loud. Uh, but yeah, or maybe... I don't know, uh, space, outer space. There's so many different ways that we can look at this and, and see how we can use it in our art. Put this up here. And next I'm gonna think about all the different things that we use today and see what kind of artwork I can come up with. For the final artwork, I'm going to think about all the different things I was surprised by today and Put it all together in this work. So first I'm going to start off using wax crayons. I really like the effect that they have. So on the clean paper I'm just making these marks with my wax crayon. Then I'll follow with putting some paint down on the paper and I'll use the cling wrap for some textures. And then after that I'll spray some water on it. So here I go. Now I'm going to add paint on top of the wax crayons. And just as we've seen before, the wax crayons show through the paint even when we go over it. Now what would happen if I add purple? It kind of blends in together and I really like that about adding different colors. So I'm gonna keep this going and see what happens. And then I think maybe adding the blue again would look nice. So I'm re-adding the blue. Maybe some pink as well. Again, this is just for fun. It's just play. We're just doing different things to see what we like and how things come about. So now we're gonna look at adding cling wrap. Now with the cling wrap, I'm going to gently place it over the painting and use my fingers to pat down the cling wrap to give that little texture that I really like seeing. Okay, now it's been one minute later and I'm going to slowly peel the plastic wrap off. I think I could have waited longer. 
because I think the longer you wait, more of the, the stronger the effects are that you would see. But because it's still wet, I think I still have a chance to spray some clear water on it and, and see what that does. Now I stopped here because I didn't want to do too many kind of splashes. I think that was enough and we'll just wait for that to dry. At this stage, I'm going to take the tape off and we'll have a closer look at our creation. Okay, now you can see that it's still quite wet, but look at these beautiful effects. And I just love that this watercolor play has us make an artwork that is completely unique. And even if you tried your best, even if you tried your hardest, you wouldn't be able to create this exact same thing again. Um, so it really kind of captures the fun that we had today and just this moment that we will, won't be able to get back again, but you're able to then use this these different kind of things that you played with to create another drawing or another painting rather. So I, I love my, I think this reminds me of the pictures I've seen of outer space and I just really love it. So I think I'm going to see if I can surprise someone with it just to share the joy that we had in creating this artwork. Thank you for joining me for an episode of explore watercolor play and discover surprises along the way. I hope you have a good day. Now with my art in hand, I'm gonna see if I can surprise a colleague here at Art Starts. Hi. Hi, Payson. So I just wanted to, as part of the surprise, oh my God. I nothing is for keeps, and Thank I wanted you. to present you with the artwork that I created. For you and thank you so much. Payson is our artist and a team member here at Art Starts. And I hope you're surprising someone as well with your art. And that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you so much for joining me.